It's coming up on the holidays, and whether you are buying parts for someone, buying for yourself, or trying to take advantage of great deals, I mean, or whatever else, you all have one thing in common. You want to know what the best PC builds you can make for your price range are. In this video, we'll be giving you recommendations for the best parts you can get on a budget, from $350 to $3,000. We've got you covered. For our $350 build, which is an extremely tight budget if you can't tell, we have picked the best lineup of parts to fit this budget for you if you really just don't have much to spend whatsoever. For our CPU, we chose the AMD Ryzen 5 4600 with its Vega integrated graphics since, no, you're not going to afford a graphics card at this price point. Sorry. For the RAM, we picked the Team Group T-Force Vulcan Z DDR4 with two 8GB sticks totaling to 16 gigabytes of system memory, running at 3200 MHz. I've always had an amazing experience with RAM by Team Group, so we picked it, as it's also an amazing value for the price. Oh, and if you want RGB, it's only $10 more. Our motherboard is the ASRock A520M, and we've included 512 gigabytes of external storage for this PC for only $30 by picking up the Silicon Power 512 gigabyte NVMe M.2 PCIe Gen 3X4 SSD, which will slide right into the motherboard and has up to 2200 megabits per second reads and 1600 megabits per second writes. Now, we need something to power our system. So our power supply is a MSI Mag A550 BN being 80 plus bronze certified and pumping 550 watts of power, which would be enough even if you decide to buy a GPU down the road. Lastly, the case is the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L Micro ATX Tower. A really nice case. Now, if you do want to get a different case for any of the PCs in this video, including this one, just make sure it is a Micro ATX or EATX or whatever specified motherboard size we are putting in the system along with like the different coolers and stuff otherwise you'll be sorely disappointed when things don't fit this system will let you run most games now using the lower range settings for most mid-range for others i will say though one thing worth noting about this is that you would more than likely get a much better performing system if you decided to go the used parts route and just be okay with the chance that your parts may not come in the condition that the seller stated. As, I mean, it's not a common instance, but it's not uncommon either. So, you weigh your, weigh your risks, you know. Now, for the $600 bill, it's still in our budget PCs, but it's significantly more pricey than the $350 PC. And it's the $600 bill. Our CPU is a AMD Ryzen 5 5600 since it's reliable CPU, along with the motherboard being the Gigabyte B550M Make Micro ATX motherboard. Here's the big addition on this price range though. We have a dedicated GPU. We chose the Sapphire Pulse AMD Radeon RX 6650XT, a solid GPU for a good price, and has been recommended by multiple other creators. We also have the G-Skill 16GB of RAM running you up to 3600MHz along with the Silicon Power 512GB SSD with 2200 reads. If you want more storage, you can always go a step up and pick up the 1TB version of this for just $20 to $25 more. Our power supply is the EVGA 80 Plus Gold Certified 600W power supply, which is a great choice. Lastly, we have what seems a ton of people want nowadays, a case with RGB. We chose the Montec Air 100 Micro ATX Tower, which already has fans installed and it's a reputable case. Certainly recommend it. This build will run most games in the lower range settings and even the medium range settings more than likely. There are some games that are just too performance inducing. There are some games that are just too asking of performance, so it might struggle there with medium range, but it should be able to run any game you want. Now, the $800 build. Our $800 build, once again, has the AMD Ryzen 5 5600 and a Thermalrite Assassin cooler, while using the Gigabyte B550M. The biggest change here will be the SSD in the GPU. I say this because they are quite price changing and performance changing. 
our GPU is the XFX Speedster Radeon 6750XT, which will give you superb performance for the price. With a 4.5 star rating and nearly 12,000 reviews, it's a great choice. Our system storage is a one terabyte of crucial NVMe PCIe M.2 SSD, which it gives you amazing speeds, but it's hard to find at the tiny price ranges that we've listed earlier, being $350 and $600. With this SSD, you are guaranteed performance with up to 5,000 megabit a second read or write speeds. Our RAM is once again the G-Skill 16 gigabytes, along with the Sagotep 750 watt 80 plus gold certified power supply. Lastly, we're using the Okinos Aqua 3 Micro ATX Tower, and it looks amazing. I don't know, I, I just like it, man. It, it looks cool. This $800 build should run almost every game at a medium range setting, even, have, even if it has to be a lower medium range setting. It should be able to run games at 60 FPS, unless it's like Cyberpunk or something like that, then you might be looking at like 45, but it should run everything at 60. Now, getting to the more mid-range PCs, we have our $1,000 build. On this build, you have to pick your priorities, better CPU or better GPU. I would personally recommend getting a better CPU out of the gate, as you can always upgrade the GPU in the future with little hassle. Or if you have an extra $100 to $150, you can do it right with this build and just go get the GPU and the CPU better, but it would probably cost you more like 1200. With that said, our CPU is the Ryzen 7 7700X with an ASUS Tough B650E motherboard. This CPU is one I absolutely love and I've been using it myself for quite some time now with no problems whatsoever. Definitely a good choice. Moving on to the GPU, we have the ASRock Challenger Radeon RX 7700 XT. And if you want to spend a little extra, you could go with the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7800 XT for that better graphic performance. But it's about $100 more. Our SSD is once again the Crucial 1TB SSD, and it's a solid choice. We're using the G-Skill 16GB RAM, which can easily be upgraded if you need it to 30 gigabytes. 32 gigs, I mean. Watch that video here if you want to know if you need it. Our power supply is the Segotep 750W power supply, 80 plus gold certified. Lastly, the Montec Air 903 will be the case for this build, which, I mean, it looks cool. This should run all the games at medium range settings. I mean, it's not going to get, you know, 120 FPS on Plus, it's like Roblox, but it'll get you good performance for a good price. Now, we're getting to the high mid-range PCs. Our processor is the Ryzen 7 7700X, the Thermorite PA120 SE cooler with the MSI Pro B650S motherboard. All solid components. The GPU is the big step up here, as we have the XFX Speedster Merc 310 Radeon RX 7900 XT Ultra. Nice. Our RAM is our 32GB of Team Group T-Force Vulcan Z DDR4, paired with the SSD being the Crucial P3 Plus NVMe 1TB once again. With these, you'll grab great performance for a great price. Finishing off this build, we have the XPG Core Reactor 2 80 plus gold certified for our power supply, and once again, the Montec Air 903E ATX case. So if you want a different case, remember it has to be EATX, otherwise nothing will fit. This build will run you pretty darn good performance, should get you in the hundreds range for a lot of games. And the games that really just ask for so much performance are really performance demanding, it should at least run you about 60 FPS. So, you know, great performance. I have a PC like this, it's great. We're hitting the high-end builds with our $2,000 build. It's featuring the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D, an amazing CPU. And it has a liquid cooler, being the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360 and a Gigabyte B650M with Wi-Fi for the motherboard, meaning you don't need a Wi-Fi card. Our GPU on this one is the ASUS 4070 Ti, being nearly half the price of the PC, which, to be fair, is a spectacular graphics card if you want to play games at super high speeds. 
Our RAM is the G-Skill Trident Z5 32GB, giving you an insane 6000 read write speed. Our SSD is the Crucial P3 Plus 1TB NVMe SSD, which has been mentioned a few times, simply due to its 5000 megabit a second speeds and low price altogether. Our power supply is the XPG 850W 80 Plus Gold Certified, with the case being from Hyrite, or Hyrite, Hyrite, I don't know how to say that, the Y40 model. Pretty cool. All right, the last price range, $3,000. All right, I'm gonna be honest. For this build, just do the last build, but with a brighter graphics card. For example, a Gigabyte 24 gig 4090 Super graphics card. That'll run you higher speeds than you'll ever need. And it is kind of pricey, but I mean, there's no other way to get this high and be reasonable. You don't need a Ryzen Threadripper, so that's the way to go. You will need to get a 1000 watt XPG power supply along with that, but that won't be much more pricey. And with that, you're set. I really hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps us out. Maybe check out our Patreon. Uh, we need to be able to start posting on that more because we have exclusive videos and like blooper reels and giveaways and stuff that go on over there. It's pretty cool. Let me know what other videos or things you would like me to review in the comments. And y'all have a great rest of your day and enjoy your holiday shopping. And Y'all have fun making your PC builds and maybe go try some Chick-fil-A or something. That's pretty good.